Mike Herodopoulos is the president of the Florida Senate. Next year, he hopes to make the leap to the United States Senate. He was a member of the Florida House from 2001 to 2003 before being elected to the Senate and is the co-founder of the Freedom Caucus. That's the caucus that signs Americans for Tax Reform's Taxpayer Protection Pledge to oppose and vote against any and all efforts to increase taxes. He was on the short list to be named to the ticket as a candidate for lieutenant governor, took a pass on a chance for the U.S. House, and now sees the opportunity to run against Ben Nelson next year. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mel. You're a smart, bright, attractive politician. We know of another one in your state that was in the legislature that ran for Senate and did pretty well. Um, are you the next one to do this? Well, I hope so, but I'm, I'm my own man. I'm a person who's a, also a college professor and most importantly, a proud husband and father of three great kids. Now, Marco Rubio went through, the, he was the uh, underdog and he emerged and, and won, beat a sitting governor. What are you going to do? Well, I'd like to beat Bill Nelson. Bill Nelson has not served the state of Florida well. Most importantly, he's not a fellow conservative. We need people who know how to balance budgets and take on entitlement programs. That's what I've done as the president of the Florida Senate. We need people who know how to lead and not just talk. And so I'm traveling the state of Florida, letting people know about our record of accomplishment. And I think if we can balance our budget in Washington, take on the entitlement issue, my kids and yours will have a lot more success in our future. You mentioned entitlement issues. Uh, I've, read a number, I've read a lot of material about you, and it says that you're against the Ryan plan because it's taking on the entitlement issues. What's the real story with that? Well, first, the real story is that I support every aspect of the Ryan plan, especially the part that says we're going to grow the economy by reducing taxes, simplifying the tax code, of course, creating block grants for programs like Medicaid, and eliminating the capital gains tax as well as the death tax. But what I have concerns about with the Medicare portion of it is this. If you're on Medicare, uh, the Medicare portion is after 47 years of paying taxes out of every single paycheck. I think we should reduce the age, meaning we should make the age maybe 40 or 41 as opposed to 54. But the simple idea, this is not a welfare program. It is one that you have paid for at a very tax bill. And I think that we can still balance the budget in other ways as opposed to shifting the burden and increasing the cost for Medicare. But every single member of the United States House voted for, Ryan, for the Ryan plan, every Republican that is, and you oppose it, what specifically would you change? Well, again, every portion I do support with the exception of the Medicare portion. I believe that we should make the age again around 40 or 41 so that person has about 25 years to prepare for the retirement years in health care. But the other portions, the portions that again grow the economy, which would be tax relief, simplification of the tax code, and again, allowing for block grants. I'm a leader of the state legislature. Our biggest budget item is Medicaid, and that's what I do support very much in the Ryan plan as well, having a block grant that give states like mine the flexibility to meet that difficult issue. Doesn't that leave your right flank open? It might, but uh, you know, I, I'm not a bumper sticker guy. That was Charlie Crist. I'm a guy who has accomplished things. And most importantly, Mallory, I've taken on the entitlement issues in Florida. In Florida, we created our own Medicaid plan, which would be very open to a block grant idea. We also require our welfare recipients to take a drug test or they lose their benefits. And finally, we took on the idea of pensions. We're the only state in the union that did not require state employees to pay into their pension. But under my leadership, now they do. You want to be in that club of 100. That's what you're running for. Yes, sir. There's $14.5 trillion of deficit that we put in our children and grandchildren. What specifically would you cut back if you were there? Well, I think the first thing we have to do to give us structure is to have a balanced budget amendment. We live under a balanced budget amendment right here in Florida. We had a $3 billion, $820 million shortfall this year. We simply spent less, balanced the budget, no new taxes, no new fees. In fact, we actually provided about $300 million in tax relief. But specifically, your point, what I like is a couple different things. One, the Ryan plan is a fantastic idea, and we should make the slight adjustments that I talked about earlier with Medicare. But I also like the idea that Connie Mack has put forward, our congressman from Florida, where he says he calls the one percent or the one cent solution. Every year for the roughly the next 10 years, we simply spend one percent less than we did the year before. That would allow us to make these adjustments. And we'd also have to repeal Obamacare. To my state in Florida, it is really dramatically affecting us because I spoke about earlier, Medicaid takes up one out of every three dollars in our state budget. That's why we do not want Obamacare, because under Obamacare, it would increase the rolls by 50 percent. That's one of the first things I would do in the U.S. Senate. Let's finally repeal it with a new president and, of course, a strong House of Representatives. What are some of the other issues that, that 
you would like to see handled by the United States Senate? Well, I think, again, the most important is what I have done. Let's take on the financial issues. Let's move the ball. Let's have a balanced budget. Let's have a line item veto. What do you mean by taking on the financial issues? Well, what I mean is I have three kids, and as you mentioned earlier, we have fourteen trillion three hundred billion dollar debt, and that's why we, the first thing we do is pass a balanced budget amendment, and we also have a line item so veto. So a constitutional balanced budget amendment. Absolutely, because it works in the states. This year, as the leader of the Senate, we knew we had to balance the budget. We had two options. Uh, tax more or spent less? We spent less. We need to put that backbone in. We need to have that first. So what are some of the other issues besides just spending? Well, I think beyond spending, we have to look at, again, the, the, how we grow the economy. As I mentioned before, if we eliminate the capital gains tax, that's a good idea for this reason. You've already paid taxes on that money that you're now investing. The death tax, you should be able to transfer your wealth to the next generation. I also support the Ryan Plan on Social Security. Again, it's telling the next generation of Americans that the old system doesn't work, and this way you can move into a system if you choose to. These are good ideas that will grow the economy. And as you know, Mallory, I'm a history teacher. Ronald Reagan taught a lot of us really well that when you encourage the private sector, you grow the economy. In Ronald Reagan's eight years as president, he doubled the economy. He lowered the rates, but he doubled the economy. That's the best thing we need to have. Pro-growth, smart spending, spending less, and a balanced budget. And the good news is, is I'm not just talking about these things. I've accomplished that as a leader of the Senate. For years, the Senate in my state was very liberal. What I did is I recruited fellow conservatives, we took the majority, and we acted in a thoughtful way, took on those entitlement programs, and balanced the budget. Next steps in your state. If you, if you don't get elected, what will you do? Well, if I don't get elected, I can go back to my family and, and, of course, teach at the college level, which I've done since the year 1993. But this is a fight for the soul of America. What steps would you like to see your state take? It's not, it hasn't been taken yet. There's been, there's been a number of things that you wanted to have passed that haven't been passed. Yeah, there's a few things we still need to work on. One of those is we passed an immigration bill this year that would have denied illegals state benefits. We passed a bill this year that will deny them workforce board opportunities. And finally, if they commit a crime, they'll be deported for a nonviolent crime and, of course, serve their time for a violent crime, then be deported. We passed that out of the Senate. We hope the House takes it up next year. And on the E-Verify issue, we missed it by four votes, but it's something we'd like to look at in the future. But as Marco Rubio has already explained, that is a federal issue. But what we need to do is take away the incentive for illegals to come here in the first place. That's why the bill we passed in the Senate last year, I thought was a very good first step. But beyond that, the best thing we can do for Florida is to continue to take on the spending issue. This year, I also passed a spending cap, limiting state spending so it does not grow faster than population and inflation, an improvement upon the Tabor idea in Colorado many years ago. You've been characterizing yourself as an outsider, but you've raised a ton of money, millions of dollars. When do you become the establishment candidate? Well, I'm not sure if I'm as the establishment candidate. What I try to do with that beyond labels is I go out and meet folks. When I first ran for office back in 2000, I knocked on 25,000 doors, met them one-on-one, -on -one, waved on street corners. With almost 19 million people, it's a little bit difficult in Florida. So what I do every day, five, six days a week for that matter, we go out and we meet folks in groups of two or three, sometimes 20, sometimes 200, and talk about what we've accomplished. Because I think 2008 was about hope and change. I hope that 2012 is about leadership and accomplishment. But yes, I've raised more money than any other candidate, at least Republican candidate in the nation in the first quarter, 2.6 million. But you're the, you're the front runner now. Well, I, I hope I am. but. My, my goal is to be the guy who has the best ideas and uh, accomplishments. And so when, of that $2.6 million we raised, 25 out of $26 did not come from PACs. It came from hardworking Floridians. Mike Huckabee has since endorsed me. Jeff Atwater, the state CFO, has endorsed me. We're a person who has experience in taking these on. That's why I'm running. I've had opportunities, as you know, to run for Congress. Mm -hmm. I wanted to lead the state Senate to be financially conservative, live within our means. We proved that this year. I think that people across America want to see a person who don't just, doesn't just talk about being conservative, but is conservative and has a track record to show it. What's the biggest mistake you've made in, in your years in the, United, in the uh, Florida State Senate? Well, I think the biggest mistake we made, I wasn't the leader yet, but there was a cigarette tax increase. I regret that vote. I think we should have cut spending more. But when you're not the number one guy, you, you, you follow the team, you work with the team closely. But I think the best thing I did was lead the property tax revolution in Florida, which eventually led to the largest tax cut in Florida history. Senator Mike Haradopoulos, president of the Florida State Legislature, thank, Legislature, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mallory, for the opportunity. Great to be on. Thank you, sir.